Hey guys, this is my Porsche 94484. I will be showing older clips of 2022 of me taking the engine apart, like the water pump, change of belts, everything completely. Now I will be talking the first half of the video of the issues I have came across with this car and my plans and thoughts with this car. Now this was the day I drove the car before it died. And man, I love this car. I love the body style. So if you want to see this all the way through, man, make sure to stay tuned. I see y'all. Let's get to What's it. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Auto 3 Garage. And welcome back to a whole nother video. Today, we will be talking about my 944. So if you new to the garage, I hope you consider joining. If you return, make sure to like, share, and comment on this video. And man, I just want to share this gorgeous car. The first issue I ran into was the control valve. I apparently had small pinholes causing it to burst. It was just out of whack. Uh, as you can see, we had coolant going all over the place. And yeah, it wasn't a good day after, you know, trying to get the car shorter and driven. First thing first, you know, I took the whole engine apart. Not necessarily, but. I did just to repaint, uh, do some uh, tune-ups such as new spark plugs, uh, gaskets, uh, and new belts, new water pump, and all that. Now, I was really scared uh, to work on this engine after looking at many forms and videos of, you know, screw-ups uh, with the valve dropping if you get the timing uh, out of place, but I managed to do it. Uh, with one take um, after this, I was able to drive it from Georgia, South Carolina, and uh, other little places for a long period of time, and the car hasn't give, given me trouble. So after the valve control, apparently the car like it didn't want to start. So only thing I could come up with after looking at forms and all that was the one of the sensors. I want to say the crank sensor or the top disc center sensor, if I'm not mistaken, I can't quote it right now. But I know it's uh, two sensors behind the block. I ended up changing uh, one of them. And then after that, the car just started um, fine, cranking, uh, no issues. So I did run into a couple more issues uh, after driving this car. I want to say this one was before which had like uh motivated me in a way like yeah i need to you know redo it or just freshen up the car but i want to say this was afterwards so one day i took it on a uh drive i had uh brought somebody with me uh for them to get the experience of the car because it was wondering you know what it was and they liked it and all that so we go down the road i'm driving and the person they was showing me uh, how to shift. I mean, I knew how to shift. I taught myself how to uh, drive a stick and all that. But anyway, just trying to make sure I was doing it right. But anyway, we get down the road, decide to do a U-turn, and all of a sudden, the car just stopped uh, completely, not able to crank it or turn it on and stuff. And the guy was saying, yeah, it got to be the fuel pump, got to be the fuel pump. I'm thinking it's the battery um thinking that the connections was probably loose but everything was tight and it was just a weird situation so luckily i was by the house and i was able to drag it to get it fixed and yeah i ended up replacing the fuel pump all that little good stuff and the thing just started right up really fine and all and I mean, based off the fuel pump, the thing was pretty old and you could usually you're supposed to hear a fuel pump uh, prime. Once you like turn on the key, you can hear it. And I wasn't hearing it during that time like I was hearing it, uh, like I'm hearing it now. If I were able like just to crank it over or try to. Um, but end up doing that whole situation in the next situation. I took two people with me. We went down the road, luckily, and we were just, you know, driving around in it, just enjoying the car, even though it was, you know, half done, just trying to enjoy the car, embrace it. So apparently you get down the road and the car all of a sudden start making like a misfire. 
And it's so bad that I could not even push on the gas pedal and people are literally behind me beeping their horn. I had to pull over on the side of the road trying to figure this out. Like, what could it be? Like, just threw me in for a loop. I went on the Porsche 944 um, group asking for, you know, help. And somebody got the answer for me spot on. And they said it was a loose uh, rotor ignition rotor and kind of found out when i went to take the thing off the thing was loose and i tightened it and the car stalled up and started driving and all that so i don't know the car just been acting weird uh uh here and there uh one night i went like a town over probably like 40 something minutes away in this car and i was with somebody and the car just randomly Shut off, all right, like you don't want to crank. So I noticed that, you know, a, a bad AFM uh, could, you know, be part of it too, um, battery and all that. But everything was good except for every time I unplugged the AFM, I plug it for like 20 seconds, plug it back up, and then the car will all of a sudden crank up and run and all. Or maybe it was just a, something I was just missing. I just couldn't catch it during that point. So another instance, I was on the highway, stopped at a light, uh, didn't stall out or anything, and the car just randomly shut off on me. So I'm here with, you know, trying to turn the key on, trying to turn the key on, and they wouldn't do it. So I kind of found out I had a bad ignition uh, switch. I heard those could go out quick. Um, and yeah, I ended up changing one, and the car just started up fine. Like, you know, supposed to. Uh, it's just been small things here and there. But now, I'm I'm glad I'm really taking the approach. I took in the approach, but I'm glad I'm taking the approach, like, to see what's what, what I actually need to do uh, with this car. Uh, if y'all don't know, recently... um. The car had apparently abandoned me in a way. It wouldn't start. I was having, I was drive. I drove it down the road and it act like it could not start at all. Like it was dead in a way. So I'm trying to, you know, start it, start it. I like, it ain't nothing. You just hear a click. You just hear a click. Just hear a click. And then finally the car just start up. And then I say, yep, I know when I park this thing, it is not going to crank back up. And I called it. And when I went to, you know, get ready at home, the car will not crank at all. And it was a bummer, to be honest. And I was all the way, all the way in South Carolina. So it was a bummer. I tried everything to my ability to see what was what at that moment. But I didn't have that much tools. Um, luckily, we had somebody um, from um, someone family I know uh, to help. And I really appreciate it. We tried everything. We tried. Uh, we was thinking it was a starter. Um, but then again, it's a 944. So it could be like any uh, possible uh, problem. Now. I'm thinking it was the starter the whole time. Uh, battery, I checked the voltage. I mean, it was good. It was just a weird situation. And just thinking back to the situation, I mean, I just couldn't pinpoint it. It was either, it's, it had to been something on the ignition side that was causing this car not to uh, crank over. Because when I got the car back to the house, the engine spent so clean, uh, with no issues. Um, this new starter I had got had broke on me, so that was a bummer. Um, and I had tested the ignition switch, which found out to be bad. Um, and what else? And I was trying to find this burning smell that I was smelling before too. It was I was smell I was it's see, it's 
I was smelling something. It was something I was smelling that I couldn't uh see where it was at. I don't know if it was like towards under the dash. Because I did see one exposed wire. So I might have to check to see. Um, check that sometime. But I don't know if it could have been something from under the car smoking. It's, it was just really hard to tell or pinpoint what um what was what. Now, I know I cleaned my grounds on this car, so all the grounds and all that is cleared, and yeah, I didn't I didn't uh, order anything or just yet because, like I said, I'm like uh, trying to see what I want to do, um, but if y'all want to see this car get done, I mean, y'all let me know, and I mean, I would do it. I'm, uh, I would put the effort, you know, just to get it done and to see where we can be at with the car. But the car is currently getting sanded right now. Um, I had to do a little body work on there, but nothing too crazy. My sander had went out on me, so I'm going to have to just sand that car down and redo it sometime. But i glad the car had broken down because I'm able to evaluate and uh, just to do it by everything, if I decide to save the engine, then I might as well just take everything apart inside, um, even on the bottom side. And, yeah, same with the steering rack. I was trying to go with a manual steering rack or go with an original steering rack. I'm not sure how this is going to go because it seems like it's hard to get the manual steering rack. I mean, I, no one seen or know of a guy who does these um type of um uh racks or whatever uh seen it from uh 944 ncr um yeah i think that was pretty much it i mean i really don't want to do too much talking but that's pretty much it i'm pretty sure i got other stories on this car that i'm probably forgetting but this car was fun while it lasted great driving around curves um very underpowered, but you got to appreciate it, though. I mean, especially for an NA, not a turbo or anything. I mean, you got to appreciate it, like high drive and all that. It's a pretty cool car. And, yeah, uh, we're going to get it right, though. We're going to make sure we get it right. Uh, <laughs> as I look back at these older videos, I just should have just been like, yeah, let me just break the whole car down, like, right now. Like, that's... But I was just so eager to drive it and stuff. I don't know. I was just so eager to drive it. So, you know, that's how it be. But sometimes in life, you do have to take things nice and slow, especially if you want it done properly. You have to do it nice and slow. You got to, you know, take your time, think it through. And, yeah. But I hope you all enjoyed the rest of this video. I'm just taking everything apart uh, on this car. And it's pretty fun and it's funny one of the clips i say welcome to brandon rebuilds because that's what it's gonna be this channel name and the instagram or well, yeah just brandon rebuilds but i decided to turn it out of three garage because i had three um cars like the mercedes tower and then this one so all the three garage yeah i hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video any inputs thoughts uh, Y'all let me know down below. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's the tale of the 944. Hey, guys. So right now I'm still on the cam cover. Um, I'm trying to remove this uh, ignition rotor uh, connector. Um, what I have is my Allen wrench and I have the set screw and I'm using the hammer to pry it out to take this piece out and then I'm gonna have to take this whole sprocket piece out and then the can will come out and I can paint this bad boy over and stuff. So let's get to it.
YouTube, welcome to another 944 video. So right now, I am making sure this whole area right here is black, um, like and shiny and new. Uh, I'm waiting for parts for this car. But right now, I just disassembled um, that blower motor. I got a new one coming. And right now, I'm doing a windshield wipers. Gonna check um, uh, if they got any available, how can I rebuild it to save some bucks? And I'm gonna just paint that black so this whole area is gonna be black. Uh, I'm using this rust barrier, so I'm super thrilled with it right now. Um, I'm really having a hard time getting this exhaust manifold off. I've uh, been kicking my ass, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I've been uh, working too here and there, so I really ain't had time to mess with it, but hopefully I can get this off. Once I get it off, I get the head off. And I had to make sure everything was in timing before I got everything off. We get a new water pump, and I got stuff painted gold and stuff. I got a new vacuum line, so I'm finna run right now. Um, so you will see the progress, and it's raining on today too, so. And I built my new shelter uh, to high speed, so I'm happy with that. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. Peace out. So we finally got the head off after um, having trouble with that exhaust. Uh, how I managed to get it out, I used my saw and I just sheared off the um, nut and bolt and I made it this far but it looked pretty damn clean it don't look bad at all to be honest just it doesn't really look bad at all this engine has been uh took it care of or well, this car in particular it does got a lot of maintenance but you know due to age and stuff things uh does need replacement and all and yeah and the reason why I'm overhauling um, the Porsche 944 um, is, you know, like I said, it's an old car and I, I don't want to keep running into problem after problem stuff. So why not go ahead and tackle, um, you know, the issues or, you know, preventative uh, maintenance. Why not go ahead and do it uh, while I got everything uh, out of the way? This is the oil cooler. I do got a gasket. Uh, gasket and some seals for it. Uh, I got this whole kit, and I probably go with I probably go with the expenses later and stuff. But uh, we ain't gonna go for that now. But um, I will have like the total cost of everything. But um, it's gonna be pretty damn worth it and stuff at the end. Um, so just stay tuned. Let's just have our fingers crossed. And everything be okay. I know these engines and stuff, um, you can't play around with them, especially can't get them out of timing. It's going to, you know, drop a bell, um, which is not um, good and stuff. So, <sighs> this is it. So, right now, I am cleaning the head. Man, I am so excited um, to be uh, at this point. Um, I have the head, uh, the cylinder head off um, to where I can change the head gasket and uh, clean up, um, you know, the cylinder heads a bit and inside. Um, also got the water pump off and got the pulleys and belt belts and tension tensioners no that off excuse me <clears throat> and then i just got the oil cooler off which is right here and look at this gasket though i think it's been with time for it to you know come out but anyway i just want to have this thing cleaned it's filthy right now but it's gonna be spot on Gonna be looking beautiful. Um, I'm gonna take my time putting it back together. Um, probably will start with the oil cooler first. Um, 
and then I just work my way back up. So I just got to clean up everything. And I got a whole bunch of parts. Whole bunch of parts. So just stay tuned. So I got the oil cooler housing uh, right here. I'm just letting it soak uh, with some of this uh, stream uh, power, uh, the power purple. I'm just, you know, soaking it down. But the reason why I took the oil cooler off uh, was to uh, replace the gaskets and uh, clean it up. Uh, as you can see, what I'm doing right now. Just spraying it down, just let it sit. Let her soak, so you know. Um, go end up putting it back together. Uh, I do need to show y'all the uh, oil cooler. This is the oil cooler housing, so I'm gonna show y'all the oil cooler itself. So, this is the oil cooler itself. Um, it goes in just like this. Only thing I have to do is just probably replace the gaskets, um, which is pretty much it, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so once that's clean, that um, oil cooler housing, and then I have this straight, then um, I put it together and you'll see.